Welcome. This is my instructional video on uh, for pre-calculus section 7.3 in the book, which is like multi-variable linear systems, I believe is the name of that. Okay. So I'm just going to mention this, and I don't really care about it. Uh, row echelon form. So here's a system of linear equations and three variables. By the way, the title of this section is uh, multivariable linear system. So we're talking more than two variables. So again, like I mentioned in the last video, hey, if you've got three different variables like x, y, and z, you have to have at least three different equations in those same three variables. If you had four variables like a, b, c, d, you would have to have four different equations in the same four variables. So this is how we usually get these guys. This is in row echelon form. I'm not sure why this is important. But if you're doing uh, matrices, which is another way for solving them, which I don't do because I think it's ultra confusing for kids. And now with technology, you can put stuff in a calculator and it figures it all for you. I really don't see the point. So for matrices, knowing row echelon form is important. So if you do that in college math somewhere, you at least will be exposed to the terminology. So this is row echelon form here, and this is example one, I guess, out of the section. And notice there's three variables equal to a constant, and then we have an equation with two variables equal to a constant, and then the th variable equal to a constant. So we have three unknowns, two unknowns, one unknown. That's row echelon form. And then this is super easy. Why? Because the last one is like, well, you can solve that. You know, if it said 6z equals 2, then you divide by 6, z is 1 third. So it's super easy. So it doesn't have to be solved for 1z, like here. But if it just had anything z equals 2, it'd be, well, z equals 2 divided by that anything. But then you substitute 2 in here for z, and you find out that, hey, y has to equal uh, negative 1. And then once you know what negative 1 is, you know, hey, 2 goes in for z, negative 1 goes in here, and then x must be equal whatever. So z is 2, so this is going to be 6, negative 1, and negative 2 is positive 2. Uh, x plus 8 equals 9, so x must be 1. So, x is 1, y is 1, z is 2. There's my ordered triple. That's a solution to that. Okay, this one, a lot more work. Now, here's the general process is, let's pretend it's as complicated as could get that there's a third, uh, that there's three equations in the same three variables. Okay, it makes it a little easier that there's only one equation and two variables here. So let's make it as difficult as it could be. So let's say this is our, our three equations. Here's what's going on. If I call this equation or equation A, equation B, and equation C, what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We're going to go from three equations and three variables. We're going to go down to two equations and two variables. So we're going to eliminate something. So here's the things we're going to do. We're either going to group A and B and come up with an equation in two variables. By the way, those guys are exact opposites. They are freaking ready to add. So how about 1y plus 5z equals 5. Now, another way I could group this is b and c. So multiply this by negative 2. So negative 2x and 2x would be 0x. That go away. So uh, 6y minus uh, y would be positive 1y, and 2 times 2z, 4z, and 5z would be 9z. And 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and 17 is positive 9. So this, this comes from equations a and b. This comes from equations b and c by eliminating x. Now we have two equations and two variables. And by the way, there's a third, every time you do this, there's a third possibility is A and C. So if you do equation A to equation C, how about multiply equation A by negative 2? So negative 2x and 2x would be 0x. The x will go away. Uh, negative 2, negative 2y is negative 4y. And negative 5y is negative 1y. I'm sorry, negative 2 and negative 4 is positive 4y, minus 5y would be negative 1y. Negative 2 times 3z is negative 6, negative 6 plus 5z is um, negative z, negative 1z. And negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, plus 17 is negative 1. So there's three different ways I can come up with two equations in the same two variables. Then, 
you pick two of these, right? Or actually, you would only do two of these. And then you say, hey, you take those two equations and two variables and get it down to one equation and one variable. Then you would solve. And here, let's say the y's would cancel out. So I do the opposite of this. So the opposite of that would be um, negative y, negative 5z, negative 5. Add in here, the y's would cancel. 9z minus 5z would be 4z. Oops. 4z. And 9 minus 5 would be equals a 4. So then they say, hey, so z equals 1. And then you would back substitute. So you take that 1 in for z in one of these two equations, either one, and then you would solve for y, and then you take those things, put it in for z and in for y in one of these equations, and solve for x. That's our process. Okay, so you can see there's not one path to the answer. Like here, there's three different ways you can group these two equations. And so there's just like all kinds of paths you can do to get through these problems. So it's important to know that. Okay, back substitution. So z is 2. They plug 2 in, so they find out y is negative 1. And then they uh, plug uh, 2 in for z, negative 1 in for y in the first equation there, and find out x equals 1. And then there's our ordered triple. So our ordered triple is positive 1, negative 1, and, neg and positive 2. I think when I did it in my head back there, real quick sketchily in my head I think I screwed up made a sign here you can rewind the video and see but hey there you go back substitution easy oh an order triple this is called an order triple just like you have an ordered pair and it and the order is alphabetical order so when we do X Y and Z it's X comma Y comma Z it's an alphabetical order hence the word ordered triple okay so here we go wow they call this Gaussian elimination uh, here's what I'm going to do is like hey equation a equation B equation C we've got three variables X Y Z and we're going to go down to two variables well here's what's happening this is a gift right here this is a gift because there is no Z we're already down to two variables there so that's my first equation down to two variables. So that means I have negative x plus 3y equals negative 4. Give myself some more room there. There we go. All right, so that means these are the two equations I'm going to modify to get or to combine a, a and c to get the second equation in x and y. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2. So negative 2x and 2x is, oh, I need to cancel the z's. Never mind. I have to have the same two variables, x and y. So instead of canceling the x's, which will be easy here, I actually have to cancel the z's, which is not quite so easy. In fact, let me do that in a different color to try to differentiate this. So, what's the common multiple for 3 and 5, 3z and 5z? 15z. I'm going to make the top one negative because it's smaller numbers. So this is going to be multiplied by negative 5. And this is going to be multiplied by positive 3. It's supposed to be a 3 in my handwriting, but the mouse sucks. Okay, so I'm going to do that scratch work down here. So negative 5x. And then it looks like positive 10y. And then negative 15z equals 9. Wait, you should say stop, Mr. Miller. Check this out. You, you didn't distribute the negative 5 to the other side. Yes, I did forget to do that. That's the most common student error. Don't forget to do that. Distribute notice I put the parentheses around the whole equation, not just the left side. So, you know, for this equation to be the same as the equation I'm writing down here, I have whatever I do the left side, multiply my negative 5. I have to do the right side, multiply by negative 5. Okay, so negative 5 times 9 is negative 45. 
Then we're going to take uh, equation C here, multiply by 3. So 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times negative 5y is negative 15y. 3 times 5z is positive 15z. The z's are exact opposites, ready to cancel when I, some, or they will cancel, so that means I'm ready to add. 3 times 17, 51. Boom. So the z's are ready to cancel, so I get 1x minus 5y's. 51 minus 45 sounds like 6. So there's my second equation in the same two variables, x and y. So positive x minus 5y equals 6. And notice the x's. Now I want to go from two equations and two variables to one equation and one variable. Well, hey, these guys are ready to add. So the x's cancel out. So we're going to get negative 2y equals positive 2. 6 minus 4 is 2. We're going to divide by negative 2. So y equals 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. And if y is negative 1, I'm going to solve for x right here. So uh, negative 5 times negative 1 is 5. x plus 5 equals 6. That means x must equal positive 1. And then coming back here, I'm going to use, um, we're going to solve for z. We have x, we have y. So in my order triple, I have x is 1. I have y is negative 1. I'm still looking for what z is. So I'm going to solve with the smallest numbers here. I choose this equation to solve for z. So x is uh, 1. So that's 1. y is negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 plus 3z. equals 9. So 3 plus 3z is 9. I subtract 3, so 3z is 6. Divide by 6z is equal to 2. So I'm thinking I'm kind of sexy and cool. Now, so here's my last step. After all that, I'm going to check. So let's do the checking and um, let's do the checking in blue. So x is 1, so that means this is 1. This is negative 1. This is positive 2. Y is negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Positive 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. And Z is 2. 3 times 2 is positive 6. 5 times 2 is positive 10. 1 and 2 is 3, plus 6 is 9, so the first equation checks. Negative 1, negative 3, plus 0 equals negative 4. The second equation checks. 2 and 5 is 7, plus, that's supposed to be a 10. And then let me go back here. Z is 2, so that's positive 10. So 2 and 5 is 7, 7 plus 10 is 17. That checks, so it's like, yes, I freaking killed it. And here's what the book shows. And what they did is, the, they put this into row echelon form. So they added the first equation to the second equation, got a new second equation. Yeah, because the x's cancel out, right? So you get it 1y plus 3z equals uh, 5. So there's the new second equation. And then they add, they did some multiplying, whatever, to get the third equation. Then they did some of that third equation to get it to Z. So they put it in row echelon form. Uh, I think that's just more complicated than looking at it and say, hey, here's what I do. I go from a 3x3. Three three, I narrow it down to a 2x2. Two two, and then a 1x1. One one, I solve. And then I back substitute. Oops. There we go. Okay, now here's the important part for me is the analytical approach. Bam, I put my shade up there, so hey, here's the deal. This is how I test a lot on this, because these problems are long and involved, and you do a lot of work here, and one little subtraction error or multiplication error or whatever, forgetting to distribute, that like the whole problem is blown, and you can spend a whole period working one problem because if you don't get, you know, when you put it in to check, you don't get the right answer, you pretty much have to go back and do all your work over again. So it's very uh, labor intensive, or you could say time consuming. So 
Here's what I do so I can ask multiple questions on this and move on on a test to different questions, different topics, is I'm going to test your analytical skills. So I'm always going to set it up like this. So the first equation is equation A, the second equation is equation B, the third equation is equation C. What would it take to eliminate X? And I'll put some multiple choices down. So I put four multiple choices down. Like that. And you would say, oh, A minus 2B. So, hey, if I multiply B by negative 2, negative 2 times 2X makes negative 4X. Yeah, those would cancel. That would be good for eliminating X. Uh, 1A minus 4C. So negative 4 times C, negative 4 times X is negative 4X plus 4X. That would be 0. That would cancel the Xs. That would be cool. A B times negative 2C. So multiply C times negative 2. That makes negative 2X plus 2X. That makes 0 Xs. So that would cancel the Xs. 2A plus B. Well, 2 times A, that would make 8X. And then plus 2X, that actually makes 10X, not 0X. This is the one that does not work. So I'm either going to list four options. You tell me the one that does not work to eliminate X. Or I list four options and only one of them works. And so that's how this works. And this is how you do your analysis. Because I look here at this and go, hey, what would it take to cancel the X's? Eh, it's pretty easy. But notice here, smaller numbers, maybe this is slightly easier. This one, this would be my favorite right here. Be like, hey, let's multiply this guy by negative 3. I'm sorry, positive 3. Because then those guys would cancel. So how about 1B plus 3C? And then A and B, the Y's are, are the same, so one of them needs to be opposites. So how about uh, I'll make this guy the negative. So 1A and the opposite of C. And I would sketch it out, and that would be my plan. I would do this. I'd write down my equation for X and Z, because Y would be eliminated. I'd do this. I'd get my equation for X and Z. Then I'd take that 2 by 2 matrix and get it down to 1. So that's how quick the analysis here can go. So just to start over from scratch on this problem, what does it take to eliminate x? Well, hey, this guy right here, multiply b by negative 2, add it to a. Boom, that's what this says. For a and c, what would it take? Well, hey, 1 goes into 4 exactly 4 times, and they're the same sign, so it needs to be negative. So how about negative 4 times c, add it to 1a. 1a, add it to negative 4c. And then for B and C, uh, how about multiply C by negative 2? Add it to B. Bam. Okay, what would it take to cancel the Y's for A and B? Well, hey, how about multiply A by 3 and then just add it to B? So positive 3Y minus 3Y would be 0. Bam. For B and C, pretty much the same thing. Multiply C by 3. So 3Y minus 3Y would be 0. So 3C plus B. 3C plus B. And then for uh, A and C, these guys are opposites. Or these guys are the same, so I just need to make one of them opposite. So you can either go negative A plus C or positive A added to negative C. And because this guy has bigger numbers and kids make sign errors, I just kind of, that's just, I actually have a reason. It's not arbitrary that I put, I would prefer to put the negative on the C. Because then these guys are all negative. That makes a positive there. So my numbers are positive over here. I got positive 14. And here, this and the negative, they mostly turn out to be positive, except for disease. Disease can be negative. So, hey, you just can't get rid of all the negatives all the time. That's just not realistic. Okay, then to solve the y's. Well, what about a and b? Well, they're already opposite signs. They're common multiple, lowest common multiple, 6. So how about 2a and 3b? Bam. And then for, what do we do here, B and C, A and C, okay. So for A and C, hey, this guy goes in that guy three times. So how about 3C plus A? So 3C added to positive A. And then for A and, uh, uh, a and B, I'm sorry, B and C, how about this guy multiplied by negative 2? So B and negative 2C, B and negative 2C. There's my analysis. Okay. Okay, solve the system linear equations here. This is going to be an inconsistent system. So let's see what the book does. 
so they can do all this stuff. Okay. So here's what they do. When they do this, they end up with two equations and two variables. When you get two equations and two variables, you notice, hey, the, these guys are the same. So the YZ uh, line here has the same slope, but different Y-intercepts. That means there's parallel lines. That means there's no solution. And when they continue on down to solve that, they end up with a false statement. And what's that false statement say? It says 0 is equal to negative 2. That means when Y and Z both canceled out, and we're left with a false statement, it means it doesn't matter what Y and Z are. These guys never have something to be true. So that means there's no solution here. And what they say with no solution is inconsistent here. Because two of the planes, I'm going to do this on the last slide, two of the planes are parallel because each of these makes a plane in three dimensions. So two of the planes are parallel, so there's no way they can all meet at one point. Now, infinitely many solutions. Same thing here. You're going to get down to this. When they do this, then notice this, these two equations right here. They're the same equation because multiply this guy here by 3. Oh, 3y minus 3z, 3 times 0 is 0. Wow, they're really the same line. And so now this is, um, there's something else going on here. Then they get really complicated, which I am not going to do and get you to solve for every order triple. So there's there's an equation uh, that tells you all the order triples that make that, so, that solution true. I am not going to go there with you guys. So overly complicated beyond the scope of this course. But what's going on here? What does this mean? Well, here's what's going on. Because each equation in three variables, x, y, z, by the way, here, let me, let me kind of do this. I should probably get the line drawing tool. Uh, da, 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 let's go there. Second, then this line. Okay. So we have the x-axis, and we have the y-axis. Now, here's what happens. The z-axis, when we go three-dimensionals, the z-axis goes straight into and out of the board or out of the, the computer screen here. And so it would look like a dot right here because it goes straight in and out, and you're looking straight on it. Okay, so what we do for drawing is we draw it with perspective. So we're going to try to imitate a three-dimensional object in a two-dimensional space, and we do it like this. First of all, let's make the line a little thinner. And then just go back like this. Now, here's the cool, sexy thing. It's like, hey, we know the x and y axis are perpendicular to each other. Well, the z axis is perpendicular to the x axis, and the z axis is perpendicular to the y axis. So all three of those guys are perpendicular to each other. The math word for that is orthogonal. So the x, y, and z axes are orthogonal to each other. Now, so we get when we get a plane, so we have x, y, and z. So an equation in just x and y makes a line on the x, y plane. An equation in z and y makes a line on the z, y plane. An equation in just the letters x and z makes a line in the x, z plane. And we have an equation in all three variables, x, y, and z, we get a plane. So here's the classic normal thing going on is you got three planes. One plane is the one equation is the yellow plane. Another's the the pink or salmon colored plane. The other one's the light blue colored plane. Notice they meet at one point. Now, when do we get no solutions? Well, we get no solutions like here. So because notice the yellow and blue plane, they meet. Let me get the red marker. The yellow and the blue plane, they meet here on this red line and then this red line crosses the salmon color plane at one point that's the solution between all three planes or you could say the yellow and salmon color plane they meet at this line so there's the intersection of those two planes and all those intersection points only hit the blue plane at one point which is right here now what happens here you get hey the yellow and blue plane meet here, 
That makes a line. And that line is, is parallel to the salmon colored plane and never crosses it. And then the yellow are, and salmon colored planes, they intersect in a line like this, but that is parallel to the blue plane, never crosses it. And the salmon and blue colored planes, they meet in a line like that, and that line is behind the yellow plane and never crosses it. So that's one way to get no solution. Another way to get no solution is if all three planes are parallel to each other. And then you can get a solution of a line if all three planes intersect in the same line. So geometrically they look like that. And then what if all three planes are the same plane? Then you get the solution is not a line, the solution is a plane. Just like with two lines, you know, we have said, hey, two lines cross, we get a point. When the two lines are parallel, we get no solution. When the two lines are the same line, we get the solution is the line. So there's infinitely many solutions. Same thing here, analogous. So we get one point. We get no solution here. This is no solution. And then we get the solutions. There's an infinite number of solutions, which happen to make a line here, which happen to make a plane there. So that's what's going on here uh, geometrically when you're solving these. Anyways, that pretty much is all I want to talk about on this topic. So we are done. So work problems in class, work the practice problems I give you. And, you know, if you have questions, ask away, hunt me down for tutoring. Let's get her done. All right. Other than that, have a good one. Aloha.